we continue our ongoing series of campus conversations, keeping us connected, even when we can't be together on campus. And really, really happy to be joined online today by Trey Lamb, head football coach at Gardner-Webb. Trey, good to see you again. Um, you know, you've been on the job for something like, what, five months? Ever expect to be sidelined by a global pandemic? Yeah, I guess the, uh, you know, we went through quite a interview process with, with you and, and Chuck Birch and global pandemic question never came up. I was, I was waiting for that one. I, I, uh, it was, it's, it's a different, different time. You know, we're, this is uncharted territory. It's, it's uh, scary as a nation and, and for the world, but, um, you know, I, I think we've done a great job so far with some of the teleconference stuff and keeping in touch with our guys. And I know we'll hit on that here in a little bit, but, um, you know, this is nothing you can be prepared for as a first time head coach. I don't care if you've been a head coach for 50 years. This is, this is, uh, this is a different, different territory, different times. And um, I think our staff has done a great job. So here we are, second half of April right now. What would you have normally been doing with the team at this point in your preparations? Practice, spring game, conditioning, those kinds of things? Right. Well, you know, we, we would have just finished spring practice in our spring game. So we didn't get to do any spring practices, which is which really hurts us as a first time staff, you know, not getting to know our players, not getting to see their talents on the field. Um, so that was a challenge. But there's a lot of teams out there that didn't get to do spring. Um, it kind of fell at, a, at an interesting time for as far as football is concerned, as far as when when COVID got got worse and, and kind of when the quarantine started. Uh, but the biggest thing we missed was spring practice, obviously being around our guys for the spring semester. Um, another thing people don't realize is our coaches are supposed to go on the road April 15th through May 15th recruiting for next year's class. So obviously with all the high schools being shut down, that, that got shut down. So we're trying to recruit right now for, for next signing class, doing a lot with our guys, um, with team meetings, position meetings. Uh, some team building stuff through teleconference. But the biggest thing we've missed so far is spring recruiting and spring practice. So walk us through how you and your assistant coaches are, are staying in touch with the current guys. How, how do you keep them focused? How do you keep them motivated? How do you, even more importantly, how do you keep them in shape? Yeah, it, it, it's difficult. Um, coach Whaley, our strength coach, has done an outstanding job of sending these guys uh, a workout plan every Monday. Now, we can't require them to work out by, by NCAA rule. Um, it's all voluntary, but he has given them a ton of suggestions, uh, ways to work out without a gym, without equipment, to stay in shape. Uh, he has done an unbelievable job. And then Kevin Jones checks on these guys weekly uh, from a mental health perspective, just make sure. I mean, there's a lot of guys on our football team that come from single parent homes that uh, don't necessarily have three square meals all the time, um, you know, have internet issues at home. Our, there's guys on our team that are struggling with some of these things. And, and, you know, Kevin's done a great job. Our assistant coaches have done a great job checking on these players. Uh, we do a team meeting every Wednesday, have a guest speaker, uh, kind of do a question and answer with our guys to get to know them. We ask them different questions. Um, who's your hero? What does Gardner Web football mean to you? Um, fundamental word that describes you or your family. Just trying to get to know these guys on a weekly basis. Our coaches do position meetings on Monday and Tuesday. Um, my biggest fear right now is academics. I want to make sure we're doing a good Don't job. <laughs> no, no, not in a bad way. I just want to make sure our guys are, are doing the work that they're supposed to do. There's no reason our GPA shouldn't go up during this semester. It's just going to take some effort and some, some time management, you know, these 18 to 22 year olds, we're, we're stressing to these guys every day about creating a schedule for yourselves. Don't, don't sleep till 11. Don't stay up till 1 a.m. Um, get your butt up, do your work, uh, do your school work, work out, um, condition yourselves, treat, your, treat it as though you're on campus. I know there's nobody holding your foot to the fire, but your life is made up of your choices. So it is your choice to get up every day and live like a Gardner Webb football player needs to live. Awesome. So we all know that the crystal ball is pretty darn murky uh, right now as we try to think about what the future is going to look like and what it's going to mean for us in, in NCAA sports. What do you know? What have you heard? What do you think might happen with respect to, to the summer practice and the fall schedule? 
Well, well, Chuck Birch, our AD, he has done a great job with the Big South Conference of, of staying in tune with rule changes, um, updates, and as you know, things could change tomorrow at lunch. You know, we don't know. That's the scariest thing about this whole situation is there's no, there's no end. There's no period at the end of the sentence. We don't know when it's going to end. So that's, that's the struggle with the whole pandemic. Um, but for us, we are absolutely prepared to be here in the summer. We're going to have 15 to 20 players here for summer one and have our entire football team, including our 20 signees here for summer two. Uh, we are prepared to condition and practice football during the summer because we miss spring practice. Um, we plan to start August camp on schedule, and we plan to play September 3rd under the lights here at Spangler Stadium, and our team is fired up to do so. Our players deserve it, especially the last couple months of what they've been through. We need to get back to normal football. And uh, we're excited about doing that. So yeah, I'm I'm fired up too. And and let's yeah. let's put COVID nineteen in a in a box and let's just set it aside for for the rest of the interview. Let's talk about you know the folks at home as they watch this and they listen to you. They want to know what the product's going to look like on the field. What the Trey Lamb era at Gardner Webb's going to look like. So let's let's start uh, first by talking about that first recruiting class. What did you prioritize? What did you think you needed? And did you get what you wanted? Well, there's no coach in America that's going to tell you he didn't get what he wanted. So we, we're very <laughs> excited about what we got. Um, obviously, those guys don't get on campus till June, um, but we we address some depth issues. We don't have much depth on our, in our program. Um, we have 66 football players right now. We're trying to get that number up close to 100, 105. We're trying to get some really good quality walk-ons, some really good quality scholarship players, um, trying to get the most bang for our buck uh, when it comes to depth. We addressed a speed issue. I think we had a little bit of a speed problem. Uh, we wanted to get faster, and then we wanted to get bigger on both sides of the ball up front. Um, we do have some good returning players. I'm, I'm very excited about some guys we got coming back. I think we can put a great product on the field with what we already have. We just need some depth, some speed, and some size to go with that. Yeah, you mentioned the returners. Talk a little bit about some of those veterans and the leadership roles that they're going to play. What, what are you looking for from them? What are the strengths of, of those veterans? Right. Um, I think our strength right now is, is probably at the receiver position. And at the defensive back backfield position, we're very long at those two positions. We got good length, good size. Um, need to add some speed at those positions. But we got two linebackers coming back that made a lot of plays for for Gardner Webb last year and in, in the last few years. Uh, we got some older guys up front. We need to get stronger, bigger, faster, and stronger. Um, Coach Whaley has done a great job with that. But the biggest difference I can tell so far has nothing to do with athleticism. It has everything to do with intangibles. Our, our team is coming together, and, and there's a togetherness, I think, that they're experiencing when you listen to them talk, when you listen to them um, in the weight room, listen to them at edge drills. There's a togetherness that there's there's some accountability for one another in the program, and, and they want to see each other grow, just like the coaches want to see them grow, just like we want to grow. I just want to see how good we can get, the 2020 Gardner-Webb football team can get over the next few months. Yeah, you talk about accountability. Um, what about swagger? How important is it to have a little swagger heading into the next season? There's no question. And we need some things to go our, our way early. Um, no question to have to make a run like we want to make. But um, I want these guys thinking different. I want them walking around different. I want them looking different. Um, there, there is a swagger that we're trying to get back. And our older guys have done a great job of that. Guys like Darian Reynolds, um, Isaiah Gathings, um, I know Devron's just a sophomore, but guys like that, just Darius Clark, some of those guys walk around different. They're, they just feel different. There's, there's a different feel. They're, they have some swag back, and um, I think we've done a good job of trying to instill in them how important the power of thinking is. If you think you're good, you look good, and, and you walk around good, you're probably going to play better uh, than you would otherwise. So um, I think there is a swag that we, we're trying to get um, when we walk around campus and we walk around the weight room or the facility. We want to stick our chest out and be proud to represent Gardner Webb football. So I know attitude and effort mean a lot to you, and you surrounded yourself with a great group of assistant coaches who exude energy and optimism and 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 swagger. Talk to us a little bit about some of those guys, where they came in from, and introduce that crowd of of, of people who are helping you this coming season. Right. Um, every coach we hired 
is has played or coached at the FCS level and won a championship at the FCS level. That was important to me. I hired a bunch of guys I trusted. I hired three offensive guys that came with me from the offensive side of the ball where I came from. Tennessee Tech had a good run there. Um, Josh Reardon, our defensive coordinator, comes from Eastern Kentucky where they went seven and five the last two years. Really good uh, program. He's coached at Notre Dame, UConn. He's seen it done the right way, and he's hired a really good defensive staff to, to work on that side of the ball. We're young. Uh, we're energetic. We're positive. Um, these guys are busting their butts. We're, our guys are on a Zoom meeting right now watching recruits together um, in the office next to me. So we're, we're carrying on business as usual. We're, we're trying to get better every day and, and learn about each other. None of us have all worked together as a collective group. So um, we're trying to do staff meetings. Our wives are doing sta staff meetings on Zoom on Thursday nights. So we are, we're doing everything we can to try to continue the normalcy and, and try to, as, if we're close together and the, and the guys see that and the players see that, they're going to they're gonna understand what family means. You know, we want our wives to be around. We want our kids to be around. It's a close-knit group, and we trust each other, and that's the biggest, the biggest thing. So you've talked a lot about wanting to, to walk differently, talk differently, look differently. Uh, what do you think fans ought to expect when they come to Spangler Stadium in the fall? How's the product on the field going to immediately look different to them? Right. We, we, uh, we got some uniform changes in, in play that we're going to talk about at a later date. Uh, you're not going to share today? I can't share that today. <laughs> we got some, some uniform changes. But um, we, uh, we understand we're in the entertainment business. There's no question about it. Our job is to, to win games and sell tickets. I get it. Um, our guys are going to play extremely hard. We're going to run a, a an offensive and defensive system that takes a lot of risk, that goes very fast. We're going to throw the ball down the field. Uh, we're going to be able to run run the ball with power. Um, we're going to put a product out there that's fun to watch. We're going to we're going to play to play to win. We're not going to play scared. We're not going to play not to lose. We're going to go attack every day, attack every game the same way. We're going to have a plan to win, and our guys are going to buy into that. I don't know if it's going to happen in year one. I don't know if it's going to happen in year two, but eventually. We are going to put a product out there that is going to win a lot of football games, and it's going to be fun to watch because we're going to play fast and we're going to play extremely hard with a lot of swagger. So thinking about that schedule that looms ahead, uh, have you circled a game on the schedule that you think is kind of a benchmark that's going to tell you how good this first team is for you? Right. Um, I've thought about that a lot when you sent the question over. And I've got a couple I could probably circle, but right now all I want to talk about is limestone. And if we go out there and have oh, a, well played, coach. If we go out there and have a good day, um, I, I'm most excited about the first game because our guys get a chance to show how hard they've been working. And even though they're not here right now, I know and I trust that our team is working hard and doing a lot of the right things that we expect as a coaching staff. Um, so Limestone's the game I got circled. I want to go win that football game, and I want to do a great job um, putting a product out there that's fun to watch. Thursday night under the lights. Um, get introspective for us just for a minute, because this that that game on September mm -hmm. 3rd will be your first game as a head coach in Division right. One. What does it mean for you? It means a lot. You know, this is a day I've dreamed of. I, I've thought about you know, going on, we're running onto the field for the first time as a head coach, and it's going to be different. It's it's going to feel different, but you know, once the ball kicks off, I think uh, all that, all the butterflies and everything are going to go away, and I'm going to be back in my element coaching ball again, which I've dreamed about doing for for 30 years. So, um, I'm excited, but at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about those players, about every one of the guys in the organization that have have done a lot, a lot to be out there on September 3rd, and and. Those guys deserve to have a good crowd. Those guys deserve to have the Gardner Webb faithful and student section behind them. And we want to put a good product out there and, and we're excited about it. Yeah, let's talk about that crowd because we want that we want Spangler Stadium to be packed each and every game. And and one of the things that we're doing to make that easier for fans is that for the first time, believe it or not, for the first time, fans can now go online gwusports.com and buy season tickets or single game tickets online. Hard to believe, but we've never had that ability here at Gardner Webb. Give our fans a quick pitch. Uh, why should they go ahead and get their tickets now? Well, it's going to be different. That, that's what I want you to understand. 
I, I love the tradition of Gardner Webb, and we're going to honor every person that's ever put on a Gardner Webb uniform because they've done a lot for this program. But it is going to look different. It's, it's going to the game day experience is going to be different. We've got some end zone ideas that we're kind of putting in place. David Waycasters uh, working on that for us. We've got some some stuff we really want to do uh, to change the atmosphere, change the way it looks on Saturday afternoons or Saturday nights in Spangler Stadium. We want to start some traditions such as. Um, singing the fight song, um, singing, doing different things as a team, the way we take the field, um, just a different product that's going to be out there. We want it to be different, and, and our guys deserve the support um, from buying season tickets. So I know you've got a lot of respect. You, you're, you're doing things new, but you've got a lot of respect for tradition. You've got a lot of respect for all the guys who came before you. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you're doing now or plan to do ahead to reconnect with alumni, get them engaged, and, and get the community uh, to support Gardner-Webb and its program. Right. The biggest thing we've done during this whole uh, pandemic is if we reached out to almost every alumni that we have in our database that I've been given since I got the job, we're calling these, these people. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for gifts at this time. All we're doing is checking on them. Are you doing okay? How's your family? Our staff did a phone-a-thon a phone -a -thon for the last two weeks where they've called um, every alumni in our database, at least left a message to check on. So that's first and foremost. I think it's going to go a long way saying that, hey, during times of need, your coaching staff reached out to us. That's, that's a start. Um, we're doing a golf tournament. Um, that we've been postponed, obviously. It was scheduled for May, but going to try to push that back to whenever um, this gets cleared up and we get back to some normalcy. Hopefully July is a new date for that. But um, biggest thing is, is we send out an alumni email on the first of every month to let them know where our program is, what the state of the program is. Uh, but I want them to know they need to be involved. We don't need anything from them necessarily. I just want them to be here, be involved, uh, we had a big thing planned for our spring game that got canceled, but all that, all that can be rescheduled. Biggest thing I want them to know is we're here for them. We appreciate them and we want to represent them and, and do a good job doing that. Make them proud to be Gardner Webb football alumni. Um, they are the heartbeat of this program and, and they lay the foundation before us. Bulldogs for life. All right, right. Last question. Most important question. You've been a dad now for about five months. How are you right. holding up, friend? It's great. You know, I'm, I'm actually getting a lot of sleep. She is sleeping great. She sleeps till about 730 every morning, which is outstanding. Uh, my wife is an angel. She's a saint. Um, I have newfound respect for stay at home moms. I can tell you that because um, I've been home quite a bit more often than I would be normally. And there are days when I just want to get out of the house for a couple hours. And I, I know how she feels on a day to day basis with a four month old. Olivia's doing great. She's in the uh, like 20th percentile in height and 98 in weight. So she is a chunky thing. She's got huge cheeks. Uh, my wife and I are both, uh, I would say, short. So she didn't have much of a chance there. Hopefully she'll be hitting the golf ball soon. But she is uh, she's doing a great job. And my wife is, is doing a great job. So I appreciate both of them. Well, we're so excited about the job that you and your staff are doing. We cannot wait until the fall. We hope everything falls into place so that we can start on September 3rd. Just happy to have you part of Bulldog family. So you guys stay safe and stay healthy. And to all those Bulldogs out there, uh, we'll do this. We'll have another conversation in another week. Y'all take care. We'll see you soon.